Hello and welcome to the Zero BI webinar number 42. This time we'll discuss how to create board meeting PowerPoint slide decks like a consultant in 2023. I'm Andre of Zebra BI, and this is the Zebra BI webinar series where we discuss actionable reporting, dashboarding presentations. Um, so today's topic uh, is relevant because uh, at the end of the year, we are producing a lot of presentations of, you know, the plan for the next year, review of, of this year and so on. And uh, oh, I mean, those PowerPoints are everywhere. <laughs> those tons of slides, um, people yawning it at, at, at uh, uh, meetings, uh, and board, uh, board meetings and so on, uh, trying to make sense of the, uh, of the data that is presented to them. Uh, so I thought, all right, it's the right time to uh, dive into the topic of how to create really um, good uh, slide decks, um, how to do it in a way uh, that basically the top consultants to, to, today do it, how to do it uh, in a modern way with modern tools, how to do it in, in, um, in the time where we have a ton of data in different tools, where we have flexible um, <clears throat> BI tools deployed, but still uh, people, you know, use Office, Excel, PowerPoint, try to consolidate the, the things. The data sets are everywhere across different platforms, in your SAPs, in your Power BIs, in your Office, in your Excels, in your files. Uh, so how to bring this all together, make sure that uh, people won't get lost. Make sure that uh, you deliver something consistent, something meaningful. Make sure that you unlock the insights and make sure that you don't, you know, create multiple versions of the truth that you leverage um, on the data sources that are already prepared and deployed, already governed, uh, already secured, and so on. <laughs> so how to do it? today in this business environment. Let me share my uh, screen so we can kick this off. All right. Um, all right, so sharing my screen now. And a couple of seconds, off we go. How to create board meeting PowerPoint slide decks like a consultant in 2023. Um, all right. Um, I guess you're familiar with the term death by PowerPoint. Uh, we have all uh, witnessed presentations, PowerPoint presentations in conferences or internal um, internal talks, uh, internal presentations uh, on meetings uh, um, and elsewhere on different types of events and so on where people are simply... Uh, you know, slide by slide, uh, dropping dropping numbers onto the um, uh, onto the audience. Anything basically from uh, tables, financial projections in tables. So basically, a sea of numbers in a, in 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 a table in some sort of format. Um, you know, uh, that is beloved by finance people. Um, then, you know, maybe more sexy and exciting charts with 3D, 3D pie charts, stuff like that from marketing department or sales. And then, you know, uh, a really uh, um, uh, elaborate analysis by uh, the FP&A department or the controllers. Um, you know, then uh, maybe some, some charts created with different another yet another tool for for powerpoint um you know then a screenshot from another tool like uh, from a bi tool like power bi or sap um uh, analytics cloud or something and then then another slide is you know some uh, uh copy paste from excel or maybe a linked slide linked to a range or a table in, in excel and so on and so on so basically um, people just are using PowerPoint as, as kind of a graveyard for everything to just copy and paste into this, this, this empty bucket and just expect that, you know, the audience that is looking at this 
will understand it, will will you know gain knowledge, gain insights out of that, and that's practically impossible. It is impossible because this is not clear. I need to uh, I need to understand all these shapes and colors and and numbers and switch the context and so on. And it's 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 practically impossible, um, you know, for for people to for the end audience to 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 follow the train of thought uh, through all of those um, artifacts being just shoved at them. And this is not um, how to achieve clarity. This is not how to achieve understanding. This is not how to unlock the insights that we have today. Um, you know, with the vast um, quantity of data that that are available uh, to us, um, you know, typically um, are available, you know, very in a very easy way. So we can just refresh something, get to the data, and and so on, right? So it is even more important today that we do deliver the insights based on our data in a meaningful way that is clear, that is understandable, that is consistent, um, and, and, and so on, right? So here's another try. Um, this is also data and um, data and, and insights brought from many different tools. Um, some of it is from Power BI, some of it is from Excel, some of it is, is just an ad hoc analysis in PowerPoint or just you know charting in, in PowerPoint. Some of it is linked to some other data sources and so on. However, it is consistent. No matter you know, where, did it, where this data is coming from, no matter what the data source is, uh, no matter who was the person that prepared this, um, no matter you know what department this is and, and so on, what tools they are using, who prepared it, it's consistent material that you know um, where um, that has a consistent storyline, that has consistent design where the same shape and color means the same, uh, no matter you know what the tool, that people are using is and 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 so on, right? And this is what I would like to um, dive into today. Um, you know, just provide some some best practices of you know how to do it uh, today in today's world. And we will not talk just um, about the uh, design itself, for example, right? Because what is also new today in today's world is you know that um we are doing our meetings in a different way right we are um collaborating we are doing meetings online we are making decisions online so we need powerpoint so this is the this is powerpoint however you know if I need something, something I can click and I can filter and I can get, you know, I can get um, further explanations uh, for for something that is uh, going on. I'm getting um, I'm getting an answer to a question why with a comment or I can drill down and so on. So I can explore interactively in a meeting um, and, you know, um, gain understanding and then and then uh, go on with um, some actions, plan some actions, comment on those actions, and, and so on, right? So this is the way we are doing things uh, today. We need tools that are uh, where, you know, you can simply uh, uh, take a look, interact, um, collaborate, uh, probably in a collaborative way with multiple users, and then say, all right, what's going on here? Maybe I need to enter uh, to, to make a comment here. You know, you, you must have different different ways of looking at data from, from, from top uh, down into details and so on. So also the tools needed today, um, you know, they need different functionality than they used to five years ago, three years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. And all these tools, basically, they do the same. They just let you create some charts and then some designers would use those tools, 
create charts, um, put them on a on a slide as a um, static chart, right? And then people will just see that and be completely passive, right? And this is not how we are doing our meetings and doing our decisions today. Today, we use interactive tools. Um, you know, we have an intelligent conversation, what to do here. You know, uh, we can filter, sort, drill down, uh, get details, uh, you know, um, make comments on the fly, make, make actions, create action items, basically on the meeting, write them, write them here and just move on, right? So this is what I'll try to present today. So how can you, uh, you know, create material like this, how you go about um, structuring your um, slide decks, basically, how you go about structuring your slides, uh, and how do you create all those visuals, and how you do it um, insanely fast, basically, um, without, you know, fiddling with settings and 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 whatnot of of different software tools uh how do you automate that how you make sure that you link uh things and reuse um reuse um material that's already available in your company all right um so let me make to my presentation so uh yeah i'm the founder at at Zebra BI and the CEO, so um, Microsoft Most uh, Valuable Professional Alumni Member and um, IBCS Certified Consultant. But uh, I'm uh, so yeah. The agenda um, just um, it'll be a 60-minute uh, session today with uh, Q and A at the end, and we are recording this, so you will get the recording um, after. The meeting is done, and I'm very lucky today uh, that I've teamed up with our uh, all those beautiful slides. And uh, uh, I must also disclose that Thielen is a consultant, um, uh, you know, one of those uh, uh, big four uh, that used to actually work for one of those big four consulting companies. So he knows uh, how how this is done, Thielen. Hi. Yeah, th thanks, Andre. Yeah, I, I, I am an ex consultant, but I'm very much very enthusiastic to be joining Zebra and uh, uh, somehow helping you. And um, hopefully, you're also excited about this presentation as I am. Um, yeah, we hope you will get our message of how efficiently communicate information. So, something that Andre is already mentioning, and that you will recognize Zebra BI really as a modern tool to have for kind of business reporting. Um, and one last thing to mention. So for any questions, uh, more of a technical nature, uh, if you have any questions, uh, please kindly pose them in a Q&A dedicated session at the top right corner uh, to help us provide the quicker responses to you and to really have an overview of all the questions. Thanks so much, Thielen. So keep those questions coming, just, just write them then. Um, we'll address them at the end, but Thielen will also try to uh, answer some of them on the fly. Uh, so um, uh, Thielen, you used to work for KPMG, uh, but also other like big four, big four consulting uh, companies like you know McKinsey, uh, Deloitte, um, PwC, and, and, and other like consulting firms. Uh, they have you know similar methods how to how to create visuals and and and, and so on and uh, many of them are um, our clients and we have been working quite closely with them so hopefully i'll be able to share some you know very practical uh, advice and very practical also tips and tricks um you know um on designing the the, the slides uh creating messaging and and, and so on it basically this knowledge uh um, yeah, is uh, uh, comes from from consulting industry, especially uh, from McKinsey. Uh, people like uh, famous people like like Barbara Minto and and, and others, right? Um, so that's the foundation for for uh, today's topic. Um, let me start by just by just mentioning like seven success factors, uh, you know, for actionable presentations today. So number one is definitely clarity and clarity in the sense of, of you know, cleaningness of, of just cleaning your slides from all the clutter or decluttering everything that you have. So just removing 
anything from from backgrounds and 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 charts, decorations, and 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 uh, effects, uh, visual effects that don't have any any sort of um, meaning or, or content, right? So this clarity is very important. Uh, first, that, that we actually can read things, uh, you know, uh, and this clarity. Um, then also leads to you know if 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 you are using clear clear design a uh, very simple design then you can communicate it then you can actually show more things right um, and when when you are doing all that it's important that you're consistent okay it's important that you're consistent no matter if you're using PowerPoint or Excel or Power BI or SAP tools or anything, right? It's important that you're doing it in a consistent way, consistent shapes, consistent terminology. Um, you know, um, the same word should mean the same thing, right? Uh, and, you know, so in, in the same sense, the, the same type of chart um, should mean, you know, the same shape in a chart or the same color should always mean the same thing, right? So, okay, so maybe it's, you know, green for the positive variance, um, uh, red for the negative variance. Uh, then we are using some patterns, you know, what is the actual data? What's the forecast? What's the plan? So that when I see it, I immediately understand what, um, um, the, what, what is on the, uh, I understand basically the notation, right? I can, I can just, just, you know, read it as as a language. So so the consistency is, is extremely important. Of course, then also the storyline. How do you construct the whole presentation? Um, what's your key message? Um, you know, you know what are the relations between sections in your um, presentation to the whole storyline? So how does it fit together? Um, and then uh, with this, once you once you have the first three points, you know. Only then, basically, you start unlocking the understanding, all right? So once the things are clear, consistent, once you have a storyline, okay, then people can start, you know, <laughs> listening to you, understanding what's, what's going on. And then, of course, you need to build understanding by providing explanations, providing comments, um, you know, providing drill down information, pop up charts, uh, things like that. Okay, because everybody will have the question why or why are we ten percent below the plan, right? And you need to answer the question why in your slide decks, right? So we'll we'll look at techniques how to do that. Um, and then once you understand why, there's only one phase left, which is act upon it. All right. Once you understand, okay, we we. We have a problem, you know, 10% uh, below the plan. Something is going on with uh, brand XYZ uh, in whatever, in, in, in Germany. All right, what are we going to do about it? You have a discussion, you know, you discuss, uh, discuss the situation. And, you know, this should result in some action points. All right. That's why we call it actionable reporting, actionable presentation, actionable dashboarding, right? It should uh, result in an action to correct the course or, you know, to scale good practices and, and so on, right? So, I mean, this is the classic thing. And now in uh, in today's world, there are, there are additional requests for building uh, slide decks, all right? It is not enough to have static charts and just dump things on, 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 on people because they will, they will, they will answer, they will, they will um, um, pose the question why and you know you will still have this this slide with a static chart and you know no details cannot interact with it cannot drill in you know uh, find for you know <laughs> find the answers in the data and and respond and and create actions there right so it's important that first you have some options to increase the information density you know to provide more data to answer the questions why and then this interactivity or collaboration so that um, you can uh, you don't just have static slides, but uh, you have a mechanism, uh, interaction, a way of interacting, some interaction design um, to actually get to the underlying reasons, um, and then that will basically unlock the action action point. So those are the the seven um, I would say areas or factors 
of successful presentations that are needed today. All right, so let's hit uh, in my, let's go to my slide deck. So what uh, Thielen um, has helped me create is um, a sort of a, it's 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 a fictional um, uh, it's a fictional uh, slide deck that uh, you know um, um, uh, a typical consultant would would actually uh, use and it's something that that would be um, you know something that that is typically used for internal um, uh, presentations like monthly uh, business performance uh, reviews. Uh, board meetings and so on, where, uh, let me just run this presentation, where we start with some sort of a opening slide, which is, you know, which has a key message. So typically, uh, typically you, wa you will want to start with your top KPIs, like, like in this case here on the left, your revenue, gross profit, EBDA, and then, then you have some, some KPIs, some margins, gross margin percent, EBD, uh, EBITDA margins, um, operating margins, you know, um, working capital as a percent of sales, and you know, your, your, your top KPIs that uh, top management would first probably look at. And now, uh, of course, you assess, you know, uh, okay, what's the situation? So we see some, some green here growth versus previous year but unfortunately not growing enough uh this is actually um the below the plan and for 10 percent that's uh, not 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 too great right uh at least here um on the top line and then here at the you know on the bottom line the operating margin so so it's already so the ebitda margin is actually already uh in in the green so it, this is an interesting situation right so and i don't understand why so so uh, you know, the first job that you need to do is just provide simple explanations. As we see here in this example, right, uh, I have each line item here, each row is commented, right? So, uh, you know, uh, of course, I'm interested why, you know, the why the revenue is 9.9% .9 below the plan. And here I get the first answer. And of course, for that, you need to bring your comments into your, your slides and you need to integrate them with your visuals. This is very important. Not just dump some charts and then on the next page, on the next slide, you have you know, your bullet points, okay? What you need to do is merge the qualitative information with quantitative information, merge the text with numbers, make sure that you refer to, to that people understand uh, how does a, a certain explanation, what does it uh, relate to and so on, right? So this is what we are calling, uh, this is what we, we call linked comments and they are actually a, an uh, integral part of this visual, right? So this means that you need tools that will allow for simple commenting and so on, where you can simply go and, um, you know, uh, see the comments, write the comments uh, right on, on the spot and uh, just comment on, on something, add them, remove them and, and so on, right? Uh, actually, I can do this uh, for, so this is where, where Zebra BI comes into the, the, the picture, right? Because this adding will just allow you to uh, not just present this data in different ways, um, you know, uh, in, like uh, in different ways here, but also comment, and you can do all that also while you're presenting, right? So we'll, we'll see why this is why this is important. Um, okay, so the explanations here that will be one integral part of of any slide, and then like detailed charts that would then you know additionally um, explain explain certain. Um, uh, data categories, right? So let me uh, um, share a simple trick, right? So this will be the, the first trick uh, how how to um, how to create a, a, an interesting uh, chart. So this here is a table. Um, okay, one step back. Sorry, this was premature. Okay, like that. Um, so this is a table. Um, I have some revenue here. Uh, so. I'm interested in this revenue, right? So we just we just learned from the previous slide that you know revenue is minus uh, 9.9, .9, so basically minus 10% below the plan. All right, that's why 
that's what I'm chasing right now. So, so in my next slides, I actually need to, um, I need to explain this point. You know, all right. Now I need to understand this revenue and why is it um, ten percent below the plan? That's my next task, right? So, so I have this table here, so I, I understand the relation of of revenue. So, how does this negative uh, variance here actually? Um, 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 how does it affect um, you know my my bottom line so that I have this, this context? Uh, sorry, I keep pressing my my buttons here, <laughs> um, right? And then, all right, now now I need to understand what's going on here. So um, you see, I just click and I get this explanation. Okay, I get this breakdown of my variance. So this is my minus ten percent. That's actually three million in in, in euros, right? And you know where does this come from? Okay, I need to understand this. And this is a great way how to how to do this, right? So so it's like trying to explode this variance, uh, break it down by um, the most meaningful category, right? And do it on the same slide. All right. And this is very simple trick. So you basically just have one. Uh, so just let me, let me just go back to uh, my my edit mode. Voila. So it's simply one uh, visual here. So this one has, uh, you know, the, the table with charts and, and, and comments, and then it's simply another visual placed on the same slide. It's very, very, it's that simple, but it's effective because uh, you're combining like the, you know, the master detail view on the same um, um, slide and just provide these explanations. And now we know, all right, this variance, it's actually, Actually, the sales, the revenue from our new customers, so basically the new business here, it's it's actually um, um, below, um, above the plan, so that, that's good. However, there was some postponed deals, all right? So so there's, you know, our, our basically, our sales cycles uh, have uh, been prolonged or something like that. So some deals were postponed, uh, and this is our major problem according to, to this uh, analysis of the key revenue drivers, right? So basically, you need to expose the drivers for your KPIs. So just think about what are the drivers that mostly would explain your revenue performance and plot them, right? And using vertical waterfall charts is a nice way to actually show the contribution of those drivers, um, you know, to, to the top line, um, uh, to the top KPI, right? Uh, so this is why we also call this this uh, analysis here a contribution analysis. And the waterfall charts are, um, uh, of course, um, the, um, um, the you know um, a nice way, uh, uh, a nice means of of uh, using um, of presenting the, this this analysis. Um, Okay, so this is uh, then one trick. Let me let me just move move on to to see. So so you see, so we had my revenue. So now this is highlighted and and then explained here. And then my next message was, all right, you know, despite the um, um, uh, so my operating profit. Um, so you see again, same table, but now. A different row is highlighted, right? So need, you need some 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 way of highlighting your your data here, and then again, um, you know, you highlight it with different shapes and so on, and and then provide another explanation. This time for my operating profit. Again, very simple. Um, this time I have breakdown, you know, of the drivers for for my operating profit, and okay, understand what's what's going on here. Okay, so so this is you know a very uh, simple technique just putting things together um, and providing additional charts for explanations. Uh, that's very much um, recommended uh, practice. Um, all right, let's um, maybe create, uh, um, let's, let's, let's now see how do you create something like that, right? So, so now, of course, you have these bridge charts, bridge charts with you know with some variances and growth rates and all the comments and and so on, right? So let me just uh, let me just take some uh, uh, take some data out of here. Just copy this. 
just show you how simple is this is uh, to basically create beautiful charts like that. Uh, with the add-in, I'll just start with the empty add-in, uh, empty empty slide, like that, and let's create some some charts here. Uh, so we'll do this with the Zebra BI uh, Zebra BI add-in that is actually um, available for free. So there's a free version. There's a free version if you go to uh, uh, to the office add-in store and search for Zebra, you'll find Zebra BI charts and Zebra BI tables. So it's just two visuals that you need for that. And I'll start with the Zebra BI charts. I already have this, so let me just uh, click here to see all. So Zebra BI charts, um, just insert it, voila. And uh, so this functionality is also available for free. Um, so you'll only have one watermark um, uh, below on the on the visuals, but also the free version has is completely unlocked, basically. Um, and voila, let's let's go for a contribution chart, contribution analysis. You see now you have all of those waterfall charts. Let's just drop one here. All right, now you, now I even got the the uh, different uh, different colors than than before. So uh, which reminds me that that's a very important topic, of course, colors. And I'll explain uh, you know why the colors are like 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 this. Um, all right, and okay, this is already this is already uh, my my waterfall chart. And uh, let me just open the data. So here you have a data editor. Uh, it's directly on on the visual. So basically, you have your little Excel inside the visual. This is all out of the box functionality of, of those visuals. And um, yeah, now I need to go in. Uh, sorry, I didn't. Let me copy the data once more. I'm not sure if I pressed copy. Let me try this. Copy. And uh, Voila. So this is my uh, this is my 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 data there, and uh, it's in. And uh, now let me just uh, do a couple of things. Uh, just explain the colors first, maybe. Uh, so there are of course lots of uh, lots of settings available, and um, my style. Let's. So this is what what I was showing before. So let, let's start with the simple uh, uh, default zebra style, and, and then I'll explain the styling and and branding. Of course, that's also very important. Um, but let's first start with this. So you see, first of all, uh, the comments are already here, and they refer to the to the right data points. So it's already already there. And now what you what you basically what you do is uh, you just say uh, you just for every line item that you have here in the chart. And um, okay, maybe uh, if you select it, if you click, you can also uh, like rotate your. Uh, maybe in this case, it's even better that they're rotated, uh, right? And um, now, you basically, for every element that you have in your waterfall chart, you just say whether you want this to be a floating element or is it a fixed element, right? So basically, you need to bring your bridge, uh, like uh, build your bridge chart. Uh, and so this was my ABDA previous year. Uh, also in one uh, about the consistency, right? Um, this is my plan, ABDA plan. This is my ABDA previous year here. And th this this one here, this this is my ABDA uh, actual actual value of my uh, ABDA. So okay, these are all like results here. However, this is my actual value. This is my plan. And if you just have one, one color, right? I just have two black um, columns here, right? What I want to do is I want to differentiate between those uh, scenarios, plan, actual, and so on. So that's why uh, you have the option here to, uh, to do it with a pattern. So for example, uh, this would be a standard IBCS notation, which we strongly recommend. And of course, also the Zebra BI visuals that I'm using uh, today um, fully support 100% the um, IBCS specification. Meaning now my plan 
you know, is like an outline, right? That then I need to fill up with my actuals. And I will always use the same notation for plan, actual. And then for previous year, typically we use, um, we use the uh, gray or a lighter shade of the basic uh, color, which means, uh, yeah, this is my actual, but previous year was, you know, it's a little bit faded, faded away, but this is still not, not sort of, Summing up uh, here, the waterfall. So what what you need uh, is you need to make sure that certain like expenses, for example, uh, these need to be inverted because if your expenses uh, have grown, right, this actually lowers your EBDA, right? So um, if you have 1.6 uh, million more expenses that you planned, this actually negatively uh, affects your. Um, ABDA, uh, okay, gross profits, that's cool, new deals, and then you basically need to do the same for, um, sorry, for the, uh, also for office rent, uh, invert, and um, also this one. So basically, for every element, you just make sure that, you know, the calculation uh, uh, is correct. Um, and this is how you get to your waterfall, uh, waterfall chart, right? So the same thing here then from plan, between the uh, plan and actuals. Uh, and um, voila, this is how you get to the uh, correct waterfall chart voila and then the last one will be also the uh, um, result oops it's already a result mm. all right not completely sure what's going on here uh, with exchange uh, yeah, maybe not my, my data is uh, is not completely correct, but yeah, I mean, this is a wonderful chart. Voila. Uh, so it's very simple. And as you see, the comments are here and now you can just basically change anything here directly in the uh, in your PowerPoint. So this is just one way. This is the most simple way, just building charts, creating charts within PowerPoint, right? But you need to move beyond that, okay? So you need to be able to link, uh, you know, to prepare your data, link your data to your source systems and then link them to, to PowerPoint. So that would be like level two and then level three would be uh, bring your existing uh, reports into Power BI, okay? So we'll, we'll look at that uh, in, in the next slides. Um, all right, so uh, the extreme example uh, would be this one. So as you see now, this is, it's consistent. It's basically this, you, you see here, it's basically the same notation. I have the same type of charts. Um, you see the waterfall chart with the same notation. This is planned, this is forecast um, and so on. It's it's interactive and, and so on. However, this is actually, what is this? This is actually a Power BI report that that's embedded in PowerPoint, okay? So basically, um, you have now all these options, either create slides on the fly or create slides on the fly, link them to your Excel, um, uh, uh, Excel data so that you can um, simply refresh the data each month um, and basically automate that or uh, bring the existing reports and dashboards into Power BI and combine this material, right? Because this is typically what, what you need in, in, a, in a larger company because a part of that, um, a part of your reporting is already done in tools like Power BI and, and so on, right? And then, then there's this, this un, uncharted territory of PowerPoint presentations, Excel files, and so on. And, and you hope that you will bring all the people into Power BI. And you know, it, it never happens. It hasn't happened and it won't happen in the future. Um, it, it, you know, people will start using different tools, but they will still use Excel. They will still use PowerPoint. They will still have, um, you know, create their 
what if analysis, um, what if analysis, their prototypes, their, um, um, you know, the, uh, different uh, scenarios of, of plans and forecasts and, 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 and stuff like that. And data that, that will never be governed in, in, a, in a corporate data warehouse. And then maybe some external data from somewhere, comparisons to, to some benchmarks and, and, and so on, right? This is all the data that people have and they want to be able to, to mix it up, right? And um, so this is why you need to make sure that um, you just allow people uh, to use um, charts and, and visuals uh, directly in Power BI, but then also reuse the existing reports from the actual data source. If you already have Power BI reports, yeah, bring them directly to uh, PowerPoint. So this is a... Um, uh, Power BI report, and it's embedded in um, embedded uh, here in Excel. So basically, this uh, if I if I click here, if I click here, this will open my original report in my Power BI, right? So this is my Power BI, and this is now Zebra BI visuals again, but working in Power BI, right? Um, like this, of course, everything is being filtered here. So basically, I started with a PowerPoint, and then if I have some 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 um, you know detailed uh, questions, I can now go into Power BI with one click, like like I just did, and you know I can I can go further down, uh, explore what's going on with certain months and 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 customers and so on, and check other you know reports here, and then you know switch back to my uh, PowerPoint presentation. So. But if I go into my back into my presentation, right? It's actually interactive, embedded in PowerPoint, right? So exactly the same thing runs inside the PowerPoint now. So you know, I even I don't even have to leave my PowerPoint to go to a different tool. So this is this is a really good good thing, right? So even in the presentation mode, this is my PowerPoint PowerPoint now running an embedded. Power BI report, um, and you know it's a full report. works works uh, completely, completely fine with all the functionality uh, inside my Power uh, PowerPoint. All right. Um, so, uh, just how do you do that uh, when you are on your um, where you're near your Power BI? Right. You have this export function. So this is your Power BI report. Uh, just go to uh, export and then uh, just uh, say embed live data in PowerPoint. That, that's it. Basically, you just copy this or you just say open in PowerPoint and then Power BI will now generate this embedded slide, okay, with this report and that, that's it. So this is already the, the, the object uh, that is now an embedded Power BI report running inside your uh, inside your PowerPoint. Okay, and I can just like cut or copy and paste it into your slide deck. This is my new slide. Let's paste it in, and voila. But the important thing is, even though it's actually it was those are charts and tables and so on created in two completely different tools. They look and feel the same, and they have exact same functionality. So in the end, it's not really important where the stuff is created, right? You understand it because you understand that green is positive variance, the red is negative variance. This is my forecast here for the rest of the year. You know, everything is consistent and so on, and it's basically independent of the tools. And, and so this is basically the added value of uh, an add-in like, like Zebra BI that, that runs in Power BI, in PowerPoint, and in, also in Excel, right? So you can mix, mix it up and bring it all into your presentation. All right. So this was my, this my beginning of the story, right? Which is, uh, which is basically, okay, where's my, what's my, um, you know, what's my, what's the summary of my business, right? So that's actually the first part and ideally, you would just have one slide for that, one slide for you know executive summary with your key KPIs uh, broken down by by you know the most important uh, categories explained explained 
you know, very cons con in, in a concise way and so on, and then understand the story, right? So basically what, 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 what we saw from the data that we had is like, the, the, you know, the, the, the key thing was the revenue was 10% below the plan, right? But, you know, operationally, we were quite, quite good. So the EBIT, EBITDA mar margin was not so affected, right? But that was my previous message. And now in the representation, you try to dissect this, this message, right, in the next section, right? So this is called the information pyramid, where you basically have the key message, and then you try to, to break it down, you know, explain it so that people gain understanding of the lower level and then synthesize everything and deduct and, and, and uh, in the end um, have understanding and action points ready. Okay, so now we need to deal uh, dig down into the this revenue ten percent versus plan. So what's my revenue performance? How do I understand it? And now, of course, now you have to provide context um, to the data. You know, show more data. All right. So it was. So we see now this is this is year to date here. So this is my 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 um, monthly revenue, monthly sales. And it was up until uh, July, right? This was my, my year to date. And we see here, here, this is my 9.9% uh, uh, versus plan up until now. And the problem is that, yeah, it's, it's actually due to the, due to the, you know, summer month, uh, especially April, May. It's gotten better in June and July. However, this is now my forecast for the rest of the year. And even though it looks like it's maybe maybe we solved the problem here, uh, the forecast shows me, okay, we're not going to make it, right? It will get even worse in the rest of the year if we don't do something, right? That, that's what the forecast tells me, right? So this is now important. Another point that I'm trying to make here, bring forecasts into your presentations, into your reports, right? Don't just look into the past because you know you'll see it's like driving you know uh, driving and and looking into your rear mirror right whereas you should be looking through your windshield <laughs> into the future make sure that you have action items that will mitigate for you know this negative um, um, uh, situation here right so uh and end of year forecast is okay we'll actually end up with minus 40, uh, minus 24% versus plan. Oh no, <laughs> we need to do something, right? So, so now we need to gain more understanding. So break, include other breakdowns and uh, make sure that we will um, understand the situation and come to some uh, action points. Um, like, Okay, let's look at this, look at this by country, you know, okay, this is my country breakdown. And this, this is actually, this is Europe, European. So I see this area here, this, this highlight area highlight, uh, basically, those are European countries. And uh, we see this is one issue. So everything um, except Bulgaria, you know, negative variance to plan. So some underperformance here in Europe, um, some other things like China uh, and, and, and so on. Like, okay, so what's going on on my European market? You see, so now I have the comments again. And also uh, in this section, again, I have this explanation chart, okay, for European market, how are different products or brands performing on this market and so on. So once I have this, this information, now we can start discussing our actions and you know arrive uh, arrive at some conclusions like all right due to underperformance in Europe we need to do something um, increase marketing activities special focus on the dark region or something like that in Q3 and Q4 right otherwise uh, we won't uh, make it until the end of the year right. Um, the next thing would be uh, uh, also something like uh, price volume mix analysis. Um, all right. So you see now, uh, this is also very important. You know, where is this, you know, um, revenue? Uh, um, how does this break down by, by the 
causes, you know, um, um, what caused the variance basically? Was it uh, price changes? Was, was it the volume? So we just sold more or less, right? Or was it the, uh, the mix of the products or something else? Or the, or this, was that new products that we launched on the market or discontinued products and, and so on? So, uh, so this is also a nice analysis here that is uh, very, very frequently used also by, by consultants. So product uh, price water um, you know, volume mix analysis. Um, of course, we have um, a lot of materials, then uh, I will share the links, you know, how to create, how to actually perform this, this type of analysis and so on. So bear with me and I will share all the links uh, on also how to calculate all, all, all this. Uh, we have a lot of uh, webinars, we, we have those topics covered. Uh, okay. Also then, you know, if you need even more uh, information about the sales, again, you can basically share the whole sales dashboard inside and now okay now maybe i can go here and just now okay what's going on in my my uh so it's obviously uh, also here an issue with my baby care business unit and then you know drill down uh, go back understand what's going on go back and and so on right also check other other uh, kpis like gross profit and so on still within my power bi and still within my um presentation view still presenting in in my power bi right okay you will see a lot of um uh propositions uh, a lot of different um um different slides that we have prepared different templates uh so that was more financial in sales now we'll go into the cost management uh so for example um for example here uh, we have the OPEX so, uh, operating expenses uh, breakdown, you know, by different uh, different cost types and so on. And uh, yeah, now we're in a meeting. I'm looking at this, and it looks like all right. It's 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 okay. However, we do have some some issues now. Some costs uh, sticking out, increasing a lot from previous year. Looks good versus previous year but you know now what are we doing now, now imagine that this is a, a a meeting right now we'll probably say all right can i can i uh, like sort this by the variance right that would be great and of course i can do that so simply click to sort by the variance okay because these are interactive visuals okay and uh, yeah and now maybe okay what's going on with the office rent or salary so if this is a meeting now i need my analyst and you know check it so uh, tilan are you here with us maybe you can maybe you can give me some 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 idea uh, what's going on with the office rent or salary can, can, do, do we know why why this is uh, why these expenses are, are growing yes andre fortunately um i am prepared because of my experience i always have to Come prepared to the meetings like this so i did reach out to the team and ask around what are what are the uh, drivers behind this and fortunately enough uh, my our procurement actually said to us that regarding the office rents uh, our landlord not our landlord increased our rent in the beginning of the year oh no uh yeah all and right we decided that the procurement is to start building some case to try to negotiate renegotiate or maybe uh search through the market to maybe move somewhere else and we decided to do that by the end of, uh, no, it's actually beginning of the December. So they have to be quite fast. All right. Uh, okay, Tilan, that sounds like a good idea, but let's make sure we, we write the uh, action item yeah. down, right? Uh, let me just, let, let's just do it. Uh, let's just do it directly here so that we won't forget, right? So, uh, so let me just stay here. And uh, so we said office rent, right? Mm -hmm. um, office rent, let me write this down. I want to have, you know, traceability, accountability. So you said, what's the action plan? Uh, so you said, cool, take uh, well, care of it. Yeah, they have to try to renegotiate or maybe find a new office for us by the um, 8th of December, actually. So the first week of December. But essentially it's renegotiating or finding a new office because this <laughs> expense is just too high for us. All right, by the end of December, yeah, that's also fine. All right. All right. This item, that's in. 
it's it's in the presentation so i'll share i'll share the handouts later on so you know john will john will uh, be able to follow up on this one all right what what about what about the salaries or uh, training classes uh, yeah have you yeah, the salaries discuss um, that yeah unfortunately we had some we were struggling with the revenue so we need to make some rations and due to it we okay. did some some yeah we laid off some part-time workers um yeah so this was kind of affected in the year to date uh figures but by the end of the year we are planning to hire them back so to be in track with the plan all right all right let's 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 just write this down and let me add a comment here so the salary you know sometimes you just have to optimize on the cost side so yeah, so it's said the layoff. Labor, not so How many? We're planning. What was yeah. the number of uh, for the laid, laid laid off number of laid off people? Uh, I don't actually don't know it by was heart. It? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's let's check that. So uh, laid off. Maybe that's that would be a net good action point for the for the future meetings. Right. So let's check the exact number of people. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's 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 follow up on that one. So so I just made sure that, that there's a comment here. <laughs> All right. So thanks, Dylan, very much. So okay, this was a quick demonstration of you know how an interactive uh, tool, interactive commenting, you know, to just just help you help you, um, you know, add add value to your presentations because not just that they are like. Um, you know, read only material for you to consume, but it's interactive means of, you know, planning actions, writing them down and so on. So you can basically use that as um, as your tracking tools and, 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 and so on. And you can do that while being in the presentation mode. All right. So and those comments now will stick. Right. So you see, I was able to just, um, you know, sort on them now i can just move the sorting back to 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 the standard order of cost types and the comments will stick to those line numbers that we just said like office rent salary and and so on right uh so it's a really really nice way and it's something you know it just tells you that you need more than just static charts that you then print or uh you know export to pdf and and and, and, and so on right uh, in today's world all right, so you'll see lots of uh, lots of examples. So we'll share uh, we'll share the whole presentation uh, with you. So just take this as your as your template. Um, you know, just drop your data in and 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 so on, right? Okay, and then uh, coming to uh, maybe another point. So we'll slowly bring this to to the end. Of course, um, you need different types of charts, stack charts, um, um, stack charts, um, um, and uh, horizontal stack stack charts or stack charts with a vertical axis, right? Um, then highlight certain highlight certain um, elements. So you see here, you know, you have the the highlights, so you can change change colors and 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 so on. And the um, uh now to come to a uh point so uh, we read it uh also a port, um a section on sustainability and now all right since it's you know q4 and many of you guys are um um doing your business plans already let me share a couple of couple of uh, thoughts here on the business plan so these are a couple of of, of like Typical uh, things, uh, typical slides um, in for, for business uh, when you do your when you present your business plans. Uh, for example, a three year strategic plan where you have your actual data from previous year, like to twenty twenty two. Then you have your forecast from twenty twenty three, uh, and then you have your plan for the next year, right? And then you may have also plan for the for the following year so you have different versions of your plan all right and this is sorry not uh, not not this but different versions of your plan and then you want to of course present maybe the uh, compound annual uh, growth rate um, um uh, for you know the uh, from from last year or from this uh, year to the last year um 
or present. So this is maybe one view and then, sorry, um, or a, a view. So see, and then uh, I click on the chart slider. So this is what Zebra BI visuals also allow you to do, switch between different views within the visual, right? Uh, so um, now I have the view of basically what is my structure, structure of my PNL and how it will change during the years. But then when I switch the view, so click on this um, chart slider uh, icon, um, I get a different view where I have my years, but um, basically the charts explain the changes between the years, right? So these are typically different views. And again, you don't have to have different slides for that. You can pack, pack the same thing. If you have inter interactive visuals, you know, you just have it already in, in the tool. You, you can have multiple views inside the tool. Okay. Um, so this data here, for example, is by account and so on. So this would be one thing. Then typically the next thing would be when presenting business plans would be the bridge chart. So we saw the bridge chart before. So typically what, what also a lot of consultants do actually, they, they, they tend to use like, like one big chart and then present it, right? Um, but in the end, if you if you if you take a look here, so first of all, we had, you know, a more detailed presentation with for multiple years. Now we had now we have this bridge chart, and now because I because this is another slide, it's a separate slide. You know, I already forgot what I had in the previous slide. And this chart is very big. It takes a lot of space, right? And now you are basically um, coming to this situation when you see. that space here and then say all right um so this is my this is my plan uh and i'll present it by you know uh having a message here you know lower revenue planned runs and so on um planned growth by four percent um compound annual annual growth and so on so so this is my presentation then you show the comments Right. Then you basically reveal the comments, make sure that people understand, you know, how are we going to achieve this uh, plus 4.8 percent revenue growth and, and so on and operating profit growth. Now, uh, in the next phase, now you use that bridge chart and I've made it much, much smaller here. OK. And uh, because this bridge is actually explaining my operating profit here. Okay, so it's inside here. And now you have enough space left to actually show more, more information or add some, some, some visual um, trends, for example, right? It's very hard. If you have a table, it's very hard to understand the trends. All right, what we have, have you planned now? What sort of growth is, is actually uh, this from, from year to, to year into the future? For revenue, gross profit, operating profit, and so on, right? So it's very it's actually hard to hard to understand here. So I mean we, we do we do understand the overall basically trend uh you know uh from from the uh, Kager, right? But uh it's much better if you can show actually the charts. Okay, so you see, and this would be now, for example, um our proposition of how to let me switch back to this view. Okay. So it's, this will be now a nice presentation of your business plan for the next three years. So basically focus for this year, plan for next year, and you know, uh, plan for uh, subsequent year uh, 2025 uh, with Kager, with um, comments, with the explanation, break it down in a bridge chart, and also um, charts, what this is called a small multiple. Right, and these are not four charts. Let me go back. Um, this is one Zebra BI chart, and where the uh, data 
me just show you. So basically, I have uh, let me just refresh this. Sorry. Um, so basically, it's one Zebra BI charts visual. I'm clicking too much. Where you have four, uh, all the four KPIs in your data. And when you present it, it's all presented in the same visual. So this is just one Zebra BI charts visual, right? And it again has this functionality of basically switching between different chart types, right? And this all now works inside this slide and it will also work in the presentation mode. So, you know, you can have it like this, you have the overall trends, but then, you know, if you need more, uh, if you need a different, uh, if you need like, okay, growth rates from 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 2025 to 2024, you do it like this. If if you need growth rates for everything, uh, you can show it in a diff in this way. So I have multiple chart types, multiple presentations, uh, visualizations already packed in, in the uh, visual itself. All right. So. Um, yeah, this was uh, kind of the uh, walkthrough of the slide decks, uh, types of slide decks that we feel are, you know, working today uh, in terms that they are consistent overall, no matter what, you know, where you create uh, certain uh, your, your tables and charts and so on. You can do it in... Um, uh, PowerPoint, you can do it in Excel, or you can do it in Power BI, and you can bring all that together into PowerPoint and still have a completely consistent material. You know, whatever you do, uh, it's it's consistent, um, uh, no matter what the tool is, no matter who was using it. And um, um, at the same time, you can create them in PowerPoint or create them, create them anywhere. Anybody can, can, can do it, but it's still actionable, consistent. It's um, um, combined uh, text comments with charts and tables. Um, so those are the, 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 the critical things that uh, we believe, uh, you know, are needed, needed today. And uh, this is also why uh, the Zebra BI visuals are uh, working inside um, all the three platforms today. Let me just uh, bring this to the, the QA now. So, you know, basically, wherever you do, you start with clear, consistent charts tables, uh, make sure, add comments for understanding, make, make those breakout charts or, uh, uh, you know, to increase understanding, plan actions, comment those actions as we have seen like while on the meeting and so on. And, you know, this is what what, what will make your slide decks actionable. And um, yeah, um, the Zebra BI adding will, will help you do that. So uh, you can just go go right now, um, download, um, uh, just insert um, the Zebra BI charts and tables for Office. Um, it's free, so you can do it in PowerPoint. The same thing, just go insert add-ins also in Excel uh, and try the products out and uh, make sure to, yeah, um, watch us, um, follow us on social media, on LinkedIn, on, on, on YouTube. Uh, we will uh, share the recording and send the link out um, uh, to every uh, registered person. Otherwise, if, if you're watching this on YouTube, just go under, uh, uh, just search for the link link uh, in the description and you will get the template in PowerPoint that is fully working, fully functional. Uh, it has all of those charts and just use it, reuse it for your reports um, and your plans that hopefully you already started doing <laughs> for the next year, right? Uh, so hopefully this, uh, the template will also help you. Um, have better presentations of your plans uh, today for this year. Uh, hopefully Zebra BI will help you do that. Um, these are the links for the webinars. Make sure to go to the webinars uh, because we have a lot of webinars, how to actually now create all of those charts and so on with 
Zebra BI. Um, there are detailed instructions how to do price, um, volume, mix analysis, how to do those variance analyses and everything else that I was showing in the, in the slides uh, today. All right. And um, are there any questions that uh, we can answer? Tilan, um, how was the situation on the chat? Do we have some, some questions? Uh, yeah, actually there was acti some activity and I would say that plenty of the questions are already answered All right, by Let's take a couple of them. Which is, which is really good, I think. Uh, but actually I have one for you, I mean, as you mentioned, I come from the consulting industry where like, you know, um, building presentations in a, is a kind of a daily task. And one important aspect in building presentations in a consulting company and also in a big corporations is to having your presentation alive with your corporate colors, right? Uh, and we oh, yeah. really have to stress this out because Zebra here <laughs> offers your great functionality and I guess yeah. we'll touch upon this also. Thanks. Thanks for this question. Uh, thanks for this question, Tilan. Uh, so let me just switch here. So uh, yeah, um, absolutely. I mean, it's 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 very important for every client and also especially for consultants, for consultants and also for end users. Like in any any company, uh, any big company, you have your corporate style. You have your corporate design, and you want to use it consistently across you know, the, um, across your um, reports and so on, right? So this is why, of course, all these tools, um, you know, you need to have a way of applying corporate design in like uh, uh, minimum clicks possible, right? What typically people do is, you know, they, they take a, they take like a native uh, chart. So let's say you, you know, you go to, I don't know, uh, you take a chart, you take a native chart and of course you'll get some uh, uh something like that right in the, so this is a power powerpoint chart right and then of course you you will go here and they will click and set you know different feel fills and, and and stuff like that and 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 then of course you need to do this for every point and and so on right and also every other um add-in so there are some popular add-ins like like think cell for charting in power uh, point and so on right and people then, then tend to like use those tools and click on every element and spend like hours and hours for, you know just to get the colors right and the design right um but uh in our case um sorry uh just uh, let me show you in our case uh you simply have styles that are predefined and are, sh are uh and, and you can control them so for example you have a couple of predefined styles like uh, you know are like IBCS compliant, red green stuff, right? Then we also have colorblind friendly, which is not red green, right? It's rather black uh, blue. Uh, but then you can have your own custom corporate style, all right? And this is important. You can basically um, save a definition. And now you see when I switch to my corporate style, I will have those uh, colors. Okay, this is actually a, a color um, colors from from one of our clients. It's a it's a it's a big uh, telco um, uh, uh, company from the Netherlands. Uh, are very uh, um, I say hi if they're <laughs> listening to that. And then we have other styles and so on. But you know, this is something that you just set uh, set in the corporate uh, in the style editor. So basically, Zebra BI will help you. Let me just bring this bring this in. So basically, every client has their own style editor, and you basically just set your colors here, and then you export uh, export your colors, um, et export those colors um, in in the design. So basically, you just save it as a theme. Uh, you know, set those colors, save it as a theme. You get this this uh, specification JSON file. You know, and you do it as a user, right? You're one user in your whole company with thousands of users. You know, you set your colors, export the theme, um, put it into the style editor, save it as your like uh, corporate style or maybe your individual style or maybe a departmental style or something like that. But hopefully it will be like a global corporate style for everyone. You just do it, save it. And then from now on, from, from from now on, I just go and whatever I do, 
I will always have those uh, colors. So now I insert, uh, let's just create um, um, a chart. Uh, so like that. So now, now I can create anything like, okay, let's go for a, uh, you see this one? It's already this color. So it's not red green anymore. It's black green uh, because this was set as, as, as a color. And in the same way, of course, you can control the fonts. So you see now this font is different. It's bigger font and, and it's much more bold and, and, and so on. And whatever I do from now on as a user will conform to this uh, corporate style. All right. No matter what the visual is. And now there may be thousands of users from the same company. You know, my, my friend in the next department, he will have the same style. And, and uh, um, by default, the colors will be um, adjusted um, with the, the uh, corporate, corporate design. Voila. Like that. Also for the tables, right? So uh, same thing with tables because in the end you need to uh, have consistent, like consistency means, you know, it's everywhere, no matter, uh, there, uh, are you using tables, are you using charts, you need to have consistent um, shapes and colors everywhere, voila, this is my, this is my tables visual, and it's again the same color, well, whatever I do now, I made it compact, and it's like this type of chart, you see, it's all the same colors. All right, hopefully this, this uh, illustrated feature. Yeah, very much. And I guess this really, if not nothing else, this takes a lot, a lot of time when you have to deal with formatting and so forth at the end of the, when you're yeah, exactly. the at the end of the day, as a last step, you're always formatting and then squeezing this in a, yeah. Yeah, the last minute, yeah. And this, yeah, this is, I mean, this is, this is the, this is a very good point also, Tilan, you know, so it's not just last step you're formatting. I mean, people I know that are yeah. using those tools are using like native charts or Power BI charts or ThinkCell, you know, they, they just spent hours and hours, you know, clicking on, on those settings, right? Whereas here, you just simply insert, you just go and say, all right, I want, you know, I want a new slide and uh, I want a new slide. I want to have a chart, you know, some, something else. Um, Whatever you do, it will already come with, you know, exactly the right format. And it's not your job, you know, to fiddle with the settings, you know, whatever I do, basically. So we saw the variance chart. Okay, now I'll create a, a waterfall chart, a vertical waterfall chart. Bam, it's already in this, in this one, you know, I just say, all right, I want the axis break here. I'm done. You know, it's already designed. So I don't want to spend time fiddling around with settings and software today, right? I, what I want to do is really understand the data, you know, okay, uh, create this, make sure to link it, link it to automate it. All right, so that would be my next step. Okay, let's do this, but then just go say and say, all right, I don't want a static chart here. I actually want to link this uh, to my um, Excel data, right? And so I'll just go and I'll just select my, um, you know, my, my, my Excel file and link it, make sure it's automated and make sure that the messaging is correct, that I understand it, you know, um, and, and, and so on. So it's like, should be a couple of set seconds to create those, those, uh, slides and, uh, and reports. So that's like kind of, uh, what zero, what Zebra BI actually adds to, to, um, to the mix, right? So that's the basically the edit value of of, of our software. Yeah. yeah. Since Andre, since you now already mentioned the data linking and you know the SharePoint kind of opened up, we have actually one question about, uh, and I'm going to share it on the screen right now. All right. So if we can elaborate on what happens with the PowerPoint slide um, when it's when it is shared. So imagine I imagine that the question is about when you have your data linked to the Excel, which is in a shared drive or one drive. Uh, so what does it happen to the presentation if this presentation is shared? And I guess okay, yeah. All right. So there's a, there's a couple of a uh, couple of uh, underlying tones here. So so um, as I see from the question, it's also a question about the license, uh, right? So what what happens when you share it and uh, when you share it with other people? Um, uh, they they will see it. Um, they will see it. But if you're using the the, the commercial version. 
um, then the license needs to cover also the people who are viewing, uh, viewing those reports, right? Um, so it's, uh, if they want to interact with it, okay? Uh, so of course you can also like export it or something like that. But if you want to like retain the, the basically the what we were preaching now, the interactivity, make sure that you know people people actually all people actively use it, even if they they are end viewers, they are not just passive people just consuming those slides and viewing them, but actually participating, collaborating, writing comments, um, writing comments, uh, uh, using the interactivity, dreaming, drilling down, trying to understand situation, the situation, right? Uh, so they need, uh, they need a, a license also for that. But it's, I mean, it's affordable. So that, that's why the um, prices, uh, the price packages, uh, um our price packages are you know uh, designed that they're affordable for you know small companies and mid-sized companies and big companies it's very simple so it's basically packages packages up to a certain number of users and um so it's uh yeah and, and i guess they shouldn't be worried that kind of if someone I mean, that the data will be lost or some, somehow. If they no, something no, of gets. course not. No, I mean, the, there are a couple of... Actually, this is this works really, really nicely. So first of all, just to, to, to make sure we we, we, uh, we answer the question. So you can share it and people will see everything. And they don't... And the beauty, the most beautiful thing is they don't have to install anything. So uh, you can now go and download this very presentation and you don't have to install the Zebra BI add-in for PowerPoint or for Excel. You will already have it because it's, it's, it's now inside, inside the PowerPoint. Okay, this is the beauty of this uh, new te cloud technology basically that, that we are using. Um, so these, the visuals are running inside PowerPoint um, desktop, like here, but you can also run it. Uh, you can also run it on uh, in your um, web browser. Okay, so you can use Office Online, Excel Online, PowerPoint Online. It will run there. Um, so you can share it, and somebody else will be able to open it either in desktop or online in PowerPoint online or Excel online, or even view it on your on your mobile phone, um, um, but just open it in your uh, office um, office app on your phone, both Android and, and iOS. So it's definitely runs everywhere. And yeah, the linking, uh, the links are preserved. So it's, it's good. Also, the, the, the great thing is if you link this chart, so maybe let's just share uh, uh, if the if you know there, there's um, a question on on like how to link this and let me just see okay i think i have the link here so this here this data you see it's called refresh and so on so 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 th the data here th this um, is actually linked data to my excel however what i can do now i can actually add another comment like okay what's going on here uh, maybe ask something, right? And so you you see the uh, oh, I should actually see it. And I'm not sure why it's uh, non-operating. No, I'm not sure why this is not. Actually, you should be able to basically just write on on top of that. But when uh, you know and actually change the data, however. Uh, when you go back and you click and you, when you hit refresh data, at this point, you know, it'll be, it'll be refreshed back from your Excel source. So this is just to make sure that, you know, you, you won't lose the links and you will, you will have one version of, of, of truth and, and you can always uh, refresh it back. So, uh, so this is how the, the linking works. And, and this works also across the cloud. So you can basically link from desktop desktop PowerPoint to your desktop Excel files, or you can just link from cloud to your, uh, um, um, you know, files, Excel files and, and, and so on. So, uh, works. Great. I, I mean, out. I'm convinced for sure. <laughs> I hope also the audience is. Uh, maybe now in the interest of time, we still have four and a half minutes. Maybe we want to uh, make yeah. a nice closing to it. Yeah. Uh, do we have some, some um, uh, some short question to, to close it with or? Well, not really. I mean, what I, what I see as important point is also the stressing out how, how to, I mean, 
one is having the right tool and then the other thing is also uh, building a right flow using those slides that you have available the space that you have available yeah. really efficiently yeah I mean, yeah not using sliders to just to, just that they are because they are there but exactly use of them. exactly i mean this was the, this was also also in this material you will see like you know things like um and this was one of my my actually main main points that i i actually wanted to uh demonstrate with this example here like for example right so you have one slide and then you have another slide with this chart and then you have you know another one and another one and basically what you want to do is you know use uh, build one slide that is uh that is like um short and and put things that 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 make sense put them together like i'll just uh, copy and paste it here and you know make sure that you have it that you have it uh, together, you know, build something else. And then you have just one slide and that's it. And then you delete, delete all of those slides. Basically try to try to have this one slide only approach. Uh, make sure that things that, that belong together are also presented together, right? But then when you present, use the, use some tricks. Like for example, how do you now, now if you, if you, if you use this as a handout, you know, okay, it will work well because people will, have time to read it and so on but when you're presenting you, you cannot just go and just say uh you know just drop this on people like open this and then you have you know 20 charts and everything will will be presented together so basically i would recommend in this this case and, and a, a simple technique is you know just have multiple uh, create a copy of of the slide like like i uh i uh have here copy and just go you know just build add things, add things, you know, uh, with either with animation. So basically just make additional charts appear or um, have multiple slides and then just show them one by one. So basically you start with this situation, um, then you show the comments and then you show additional chart and you basically talk people through the story. That's kind of the principle that you should uh, you should follow when presenting. So hopefully that was, um, yeah, um, a useful useful trick. Thank you so much, everyone, for um, uh, for uh, attending the the webinar today. Uh, I hope that it was uh, informative. It gave you um, some ideas, and um, yeah, follow us to make sure that uh, you get. Uh, the template that we will share with everyone uh, after we um, have the recording ready. So uh, see you at our next webinar. Thank you, Tilan. Thanks, Andre. Thank you guys for attending. Bye. Bye-bye.